Welcome back to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Today is Thursday, June 16th, 2022. Let's get started with some space weather here, folks. Uh, last night's broadcast was mainly about um, the, ban the banning of fossil fuels. Uh, tonight we're doing some space weather and I've got some more articles I want to go through tonight, especially a huge fake news story about the 10,000 cattle. But first, let's check out the space weather right now. A couple things I want to point out. Um, sunspot number 149, okay? We talked about a couple of weeks ago when we saw 173 sunspot number. And I looked at Mari and asked her, I was like, are we heading into a maximum already? Because I started to notice the sunspots right here and here. You can clearly see the band of these sunspots in the northern and southern hemisphere are migrating towards the center of the sun. In fact, here we have a sunspot in the middle of our sun. Folks, between this and AR3027 with the reverse polarity, we are we're clearly seeing that we are in a maximum right now. The sun solar cycle, we got it wrong. I will admit it, we got it wrong. Started a year earlier than originally thought, maybe longer. Uh, actually, somewhere in 2019, possibly. Late 2019. So that's two years ago. Now, I have a friend of mine over there in the UK, David Birch. He's the one that really kind of alerted me about Solar Cycle 25 beginning at that point. But he was the only one that I knew that was saying that. And I used to think about it all the time. Like, what's he talking about? How, you know, everybody thinks the solar cycle started in 20 or 21. Well, this graph does not lie. So here you see the 20, right? Somewhere around 30, right here where my blue arrow is in the middle, is where the solar cycle begins displaying sunspots, usually in the high northern latitudes. And as you clearly can see, we have definitely dropped at least 10 degrees here in the northern and it, about the same here in the Southern, as we are now at 20, not 30. Uh, the idea, as we continue through the maximum, these sunspot bands will continue to get closer, migrate closer and closer to each other until they just start forming right here on the equatorial region of the sun, like we have right here. That is a real sunspot, by the way, folks. We're not even supposed to see this. According to our old forecast and others, like this kind of sunspot activity shouldn't be happening until 24 or 25. So it's happening two years earlier because obviously the cycle had started two years earlier. And people just couldn't believe what a weak beginning we had to solar cycle 25. So we got it wrong here too, you know? And the math now adds up. It makes sense. Uh, like I said, our friend David Birch in the UK first pointed this out to me a while back when we started talking about the Terminator event. And David's uh, definition of termination event seemed a little bit different than what Scott McIntosh was talking about. And I, I'm not trying to like brag about this, but David was right. I mean, he told me when the end of the minimum was, which was December of 2019, I believe that's what he told me. And that would mark the beginning of solar cycle 25. And of course, we had a very weak beginning to this cycle. And I love how the AGW crowd and the anti sunspot crowd are running away with what we're looking at right now. Like I've had comments, I had one comment said, I was with you on the grand solar minimum, but now look at all these sunspots and we're not even in the max, which is not till 2025. Again, we have reason to believe by based on what we're looking at here at the sun that we have accelerated, and I hate to use that word because it's we use too much here lately, but it, it hasn't accelerated. We were wrong on the start date of the cycle. The only reason why I accelerate is because we haven't seen that much activity in seven to eight years. I mean, think about this. We're seeing the same kind of sunspot activity that we haven't seen in seven years. So if you think about that, add on three more years to a, uh, four years for the minimum, which three years is at least for the minimum cycle. 
technically we we're right on schedule. So again, the calculation, you know, somebody left a comment on my video a couple of days ago about why did I offset the forecast six months? Well, I didn't mean to offset it six months. I meant to offset it a year at least. And I, and I'm not offsetting the cycle. I'm showing its true birth date. I believe only time will tell, guys. Only time will tell. I'm not an expert. I'm just reporting on what I'm seeing and what I've been taught. And right now, the sun is telling us with the reverse polarity sunspot of AR thirty twenty seven. Uh, we also had a weird angled sunspot that was obviously showing signs of north-south polarity struggles, which is what Zarkova has been talking about for the last several years. That is being on display as well. So I have every reason to believe that we have a weak sun. Now, up until the last couple of days, our cosmic radiation dosage rates were back at 6.5%. And now they're down to 2.3% only because our solar wind speeds are so high right now. I want to point out too, if indeed we are in the maximum of this cycle, it is very important to note that we have not yet seen any kind of, well, what do you call it? We haven't seen the 700 kilometers per second. We haven't seen 750 kilometers per second on the solar wind. We've barely seen 600 kilometers per second. So with that being said, we really have to take note that if I am correct in my assumption right now, and that is that we are actually in a maximum. Right now, this maximum is incredibly weak. We're barely getting G1 storms, okay? We're barely getting solar wind speeds above 550. Uh, coronal holes are showing up north and south. In fact, we're still waiting on the impact of the coronal hole that we had on the 15th that was Earth facing. Uh, it closed up pretty quickly as it turned away from Earth, but tomorrow it would be the final day if we were gonna have an impact of seismic activity or volcanic eruption. I still call that between 6.5 and 7.2 tomorrow if it's gonna happen. Central America is my thinking, possibly, if there is a volcano. But with that being said, I'm not predicting. I'm not guessing. I'm just going off of what we've been shown from Zarkova, from friends like David Birch and Lee Wilbarger and others. I'm basing these assessments off of information that are factual, like I'm showing you right now with the uh, sunspot grid. You know, I, I thought about this. I should always be showing this graph. <clears throat> this would be the best way for folks to actually see that I'm not manipulating or trying to trick you to think that these bands are closer together. You can watch them in real time with me each week or each day. Hopefully we get more content, but either way, you can watch it with me. Okay, sorry about that. You can watch this with me and we'll watch it collide together as it heads towards the maximum right now. In fact, that 179 or 173 sunspot number two weeks ago, I think that marked the beginning. KPNC is at two right now. That could change later as well. Very low chance of X-class flares. Let's go over to the grandsolarminimum.com and check out some more space weather stats over there at our good old website. Thanks to Mari. Always doing us a solid over there. As you see, we're, we're getting really weak uh, KP activity on the 15th. We had a five on one time there. They changed this graph. They actually, it looks like the yellow is now a five. It used to be orange, but um, but here we are in the storm section here, a KP of five. That was yesterday. Today we got to a very weak KP of five, which actually it got to four. So we didn't quite see a storm. Spaceweather.com is reporting that we are actually, uh, we did see a weak G1 storm earlier, but it's very brief. Other than that, it's been pretty, pretty quiet. I mean, other than the sun. Looking at that uh, orbital, man, 2024 is going to be something else, guys. 
So continuing to watch these awesome uh, orbit patterns in the sky in the early morning, seeing all these planets back to back. So what's next after this batch of sunspots? Let's take a look at that because this is important too. Yes, we are going through quite a bit of activity right now, but how serious is this? Here is the bulk of the sunspot activity right here. This is all piercing the eastern limb. This is barely on the eastern limb, but these are also counted. So where I'm going with this, we don't have a lot of action here behind this. Now, this stuff here is going to take a while to go across the earth facing into the western limb. So by the time we have this somewhere around the 60 area, we'll start to see these particular areas piercing the northeastern limb. But it is very, uh, very likely. And again, I'm just trying to compare this map. Obviously, the 20 is somewhere in here, but these sunspots look to me as if they are lower than this group of sunspot regions up here compared to here and here. There's the middle sunspot. This is supposed to be the northern one, and then the ones behind it are a little bit lower. Again, I'm pointing all this out because the more this continues, the more evidence that we are seeing that the sun is in the actual maximum and that we had a weak beginning to this solar cycle. Again, if I'm wrong, we'll know here in about 10 months, right? If I'm wrong, we'll know in about 10 months. This, yeah, close to 10 months, about, all right, 14 months, something like that. Somewhere in that vicinity, between 10 and 15 months, we will find out if I'm wrong. And really, time is all we have at this point with so much going on. Um, we've been doing this for seven years. Everything that we've been told and everything we've talked about is coming to fruition and a lot faster than we were told. Before we get started into Knight's uh, articles, we ask that you consider a membership over at our Patreon channel. Uh, folks, we'd like to get a little more uh, support going here. We also would like to dedicate more time to the channel. And unfortunately, it costs money to run this stuff. As you know, uh, YouTube had taken away our ad revenue. So we're just humbly looking for a buck from each subscriber uh, that can you know, can join and get all the latest on the Grand Solar Minimum news. We will be doing call-in shows also. I know we've talked about this several times, but things are starting to come into focus for us. But the more subscribers we can get on this channel, the more resources we will have to be able to put the time into uh, putting out more content. Because right now, there are so many things that I'm watching and studying right now and looking at that it's really important that I feel like this channel needs to be on the air a little bit more than once a week. So again, if you guys could find in your heart, uh, here are the membership levels, $1, $2, $5. We're not asking for all that. There is 12 other uh, levels, but again, this is just for that random person. You just never know. You throw it up there. But again, folks, if we could just get a buck, half of our subscribers uh i do content every day seven days a week eight hours a day so anyway so let's move on to the meat and potatoes of tonight first i want to start with the article from the dailycaller.com now usually the dailycaller.com is a pretty good website and is reliable uh most of the time i know they're a conservative uh website and a lot of their views are conservative. And like I said, a lot of their stories I can trust. A lot of the stuff I've seen on this website is true. But this is an example of how it's not just Democrats that are part of this elite globalist bullcrap. Meat industry takes a hit as up to 10,000 cattle die from heat and humidity in Kansas. I'm going to read you this, guys, and I'm going to tell you what's really up. Yet another food industry has taken a toll. Thousands of cattle has died in Kansas from extreme heat and humidity and the lack of grain supply brought by the Russian invasion of Ukraine. That's my Lee Wheelbarger for you. The death toll has apparently reached at least 2,000 cattle. And Matthew Laura, a spokesperson for Kansas Department of Health Environment, this estimate reportedly comes from facilities reached out to the agency in support of disposing of deceased livestock the outlet reported uh, blah 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 2000 here apparently 3000 in this video and look this is sensitive please be careful
talking about how the heat. Apparently, the video of 3,000 cattle that died in Southwest Kansas original tweet said heat. Farmer I talked to in Kansas said it wasn't the heat. Oh, Twitter. Stop it. Stop it, Twitter. Okay, I got to go down the hole, right? Uh, <laughs> poisoned? That's what I'm thinking. Hey, you're thinking right. So, I'm not crazy. This was my point about this story here. The temperature got to 108 degrees Fahrenheit. Kansas temperatures reported to climb around over 110 during the weekend. The president of World Weather Incorporated, Lou Lerner said, or Drew Lerner, I should say, the heat was allegedly added to injury to livestock farmers who have had already needed to decrease the cattle size. Skyrocketing food and grain prices brought by the conflict in Eastern Europe, according to Reuters. Boy, I tell you what, man, and I don't care who gets offended by this statement, but the war in Ukraine is nothing but a scapegoat for the global elitists. While your attention is focused on the war in Ukraine and how bad Russia is and all that good stuff, the WEF has kicked off their official net zero carb decarbonization plan. They have over 90% of the global financial institutions. They have laid out new regulations for all businesses to comply with Green New Deal type policies. For instance, methane, as they call it in the UK. I always thought it was methane, but it's, it's, maybe it is methane. You know, we're wrong on the temperature, right? But for instance, the reason why this is fake news, the temperatures do get to 100 degrees in Kansas quite often. In fact, I lived in Kansas for a few months and I left in June, the late June, and the temperature was 117 degrees with a 35 mile an hour gust and about 20 miles an hour regular wind speed. So let's go over. Tomorrow is June 17th, and I'm not making this day. I remember this. I remember this because it was late June, like June 20th. But I remember this because it was so hot. I've never been anywhere so hot, but it was that dry heat. Western Kansas is nothing but flatlands, farmlands, crop fields, dust, dry, drought. Okay, we talked about this before. Southwest is dry. The drier it is, the more heat we have. The more moisture we have, <clears throat> things begin to cool. Moisture cools things off, right? You take a cold shower, you get cooled off. Basic math, guys. So this is why I say this is fake news. Let's just go to uh, the forecast for, let's say, June 20th. That's right around when I left. <clears throat> June 20th in the year 2012. Or actually, it was 13. But let's check out the stats here. <clears throat> 100 degrees is the temperature forecast. By the way, that's 17 degrees cooler than what it was the day I left. Real feel is 98 degrees. Now, folks, I'm here to tell you right now, if there was high humidity, the real feel would be about 110 to 115 degrees if it's somewhere in the 60 to 70%. If it's above 70%, now we're talking 120 degrees and higher, and that's where you have to have heat advisories. So you're telling me, out of the blue, in Kansas, western Kansas, where we typically see hot, dry summers out there, mainly because of the dry climate that they already have, they lack the rain, okay? It's warmer. Cattle has been raised out here before. So what happens is, is that the climate change narrative has grabbed dailycaller.com. Because if they don't post stories that blame climate change, they're going to lose their funding for their website and all their media, all their advertisement ad revenue goes away. Happened to us. Happened to other channels too. Oh, they really censor us. They don't like me because I get a little too real for them. So here, Daily Caller is the latest victim to comply or die. 
and they want to tell you that the cattle died because of global warming. And I'm here to tell you that 100 degrees is not going to kill these cattle. 110 degrees is not going to kill these cattle. And there wasn't high humidity in Kansas the week of these deaths. This is to cover up what is happening in Davos and around the world. The WEF has already told us that the financial institutions are telling companies and farmers to cut back on carbon from their businesses or else. So it's ironic that the amount of food processing plants this year have been destroyed. Hogs, cattle, chickens. It's ironic. I've never seen so many stories in the media about the deaths of cattle and hogs and, and chickens. And most of these chickens are killed on purpose because of a bird flu outbreak. But don't you find it funny that you keep hearing the word accelerating, accelerating, we're getting ready to accelerate into the transition, the transition, accelerate. So the Green New Deal policies want to get rid of real meat, to battle methane, methane, whatever you want to call it, cow farts. So let's kill the cattle off. We're already taking a hit, guys. Anybody seen the ground beef prices? What is this going to do to ground beef prices? This fall is not going to be a joke, guys. Again, this is fake news. These cows were not killed by the heat. These cows were put down. Point blank. Poisoned, put down. Just by the way they're laying in this video, I read somewhere that heat breaks these cows down to where they're collapsed and all this other weird stuff happens and these cows just look dead and bloated. I mean, I guess you look dead and bloated when you're dead and bloated, but the point I'm trying to make is that I've been in Kansas, I've been around that heat, 117 degrees is hot, but it doesn't feel like you would think it feels like. It's almost a comfortable heat. If you like hot weather, go to Kansas, go to Northwest Kansas, Nebraska, go out there, man. If you like heat, that dry heat, but it doesn't get like Africa hot like it does in Arizona, Kansas is perfect for you. All right, so let's go back to my Twitter page. There's other stuff to talk about today. Uh, this one's good, and it made me laugh really hard. I think I have a hernia now. Biden sued by climate groups using novel legal arguments to stop oil and gas drilling. If an Endangered Species Act suit uh, against the president succeeds, some 3,500 oil drilling permits issued could be revoked and future permitting challenged. Guys, again, they're in the news telling the Democrats to release the supply, produce more oil, produce more gas, do it now, do it, do it. Uh, the video I shared last night where she wanted to spend half of the profits and invest into the rigs, and she was saying things like, that would buy thousands of rigs, and it would put hundreds of thousands of barrels of oil. And I'm thinking to myself, why would a company of any kind, it doesn't matter if it's fossil fuel or if it's anything, why would a company invest billions of dollars into bringing down the price of gasoline, maybe a dollar a gallon, only to be turned around in the next two years and said, okay, we don't need you anymore, get out of here. Billions of dollars are wasted. The oil companies don't make that money back. Sure, it helps us. But listen, we're, we're not in this conversation to talk about profits, and I really don't like the way the president is villainizing the oil companies for profits right now. The oil companies are trying to get the last bit of cash because of what these world governments are doing about fossil fuels. But this is hilarious. So Biden's administration is being urged to go out and produce more gas. And now he has climate activists um, coming out and suing him. I love it. Gaslighting. Obama installs propane tanks at Mansion while pushing green policy. Not one, not two, but three. Three big old propane tanks. Now, folks, again, 
this is the same mansion that is very close to the ocean, by the way, Mr. Obama. Um, the propane, the cost of propane has been rising in the U.S. with estimates from last October indicating those who use propane heat, their homes would be spending 54% more than the winter of 2021. So Obama buys three giant propane tanks. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure I'm warm. You know, he can afford it, he's a millionaire. But what, what a hypocrisy this is, think about it. Barack Obama in 2015, before he was uh, elected out, told the world that the biggest threat to the world is climate change. We have to reduce CO2 emissions. We have to get rid of fossil fuels because of rising temperatures and sea level. And what does he do? He buys a mansion by the ocean, and now he's installing three large propane tanks to keep him and his family warm this winter. But you're not allowed to have that, guys. By the way, it gets worse. Yeah, check this out. Um, not this one. Not this one. Da -da -da. Not that one. Not that one. Well, we're going to get to that one, though. Do -do -do. There's a lot to oh, this one. Yes. Speaking of gas, Joe Biden is coming for your gas furnace. What? So Joe Biden wants to make the new standard on uh, home furnaces top notch. All right, like 95% efficient. No more, no more, you know, budget furnaces. And you know you have to pay extra money when you want something like a furnace that's super efficient, that's gonna save you money on your bills. You gotta pay a pretty penny for that. Just like when you go to the convenience store, and buy a gallon of milk. You're not going to get it for that cheap price at your local grocer. You're just running in, grabbing milk, and getting the hell out. So for that convenience, you got to pay a little more. Same thing goes with the furnaces. So what does this mean? It's possible by 2024 that we could no longer be able to purchase furnaces that do not have a uh, efficiency of 95% or better. So the upfront cost is more. And in this article, the speculation is, is that you won't ever recover the amount of money spent up front on the furnace to really see the savings down the road. At 95% efficient, you really don't see the savings for a long, long time. So they're gonna mandatory take away other furnaces that are, are we going to see vouchers for homeowners to produce the amount of money they need to install these things because on top of the cost of the furnace itself it's going to be about 15 to 2500 dollars to install it it's not cheap i've been quoted eight grand for a new furnace in my place and my house is not that big the service is going up because the, the industry, the trade itself, might be going away. I, I don't know. But they tried to do this with the Obama era. They failed. Had they have won, though, had they have actually done this, could have been big time bad news for all of us a lot sooner. Now this is going to seem even worse because of how drastic and how fast it's going to be. Uh, major oil industry group sends Biden a 10-point plan to lower prices. Since Biden wants to yell at uh, Exxon and Chevron and all these, uh, these professional, these CEOs and owners of these oil companies, the oil companies said, listen, this is how we get a hold of our gas prices. Um, Mark Summers said, or yeah, Mike Summers, recommending including lifting restrictions on drilling on federal land, streamlining permits uh, processes, advancing new energy infrastructure projects and eliminating supply chain bottlenecks. It's read here in quotes, your administration has restricted oil and natural gas development, canceled energy infrastructure projects, imposed regulatory uncertainty and proposed new tax increases on American oil. 
all of these things that he's saying are the reason why we are paying high gas prices, high everything for energy. It has nothing to do with Ukraine and Russia. Now, the DEF situation with the fertilizer, that might have something to do because Russia is not uh, sending it. But this is why I said that Russia is part of the global elite. They are part of this agenda. They are distracting us with this war in Ukraine. And they're banning fertilizer exports to the United States. Or is it just part of the plan to help destroy the fossil fuel industry? And this war in Ukraine is nothing but a distraction as the WEF and others pull the rug from underneath of you while you're staring in awe about Russia and Ukraine. <laughs> Meanwhile, around you without you noticing, this is taking place. So you got the president blaming the oil companies, the oil companies asking the president to lift the restrictions, stop canceling projects, uh, allow more federal drilling. We were energy independent when a certain president was around. I think you all know who I'm talking about, Mr. Trump. We were energy dependent because Trump lifted these restrictions and Trump was not limiting resource uh, and investigating for new resources. We were on track to probably be one of the leading countries in the world on energy, especially dependence. And now look at us paying an average of $5 a gallon. Diesel is $7 a gallon in most places. The farmers are not gonna be able to afford to pull crops out of the fields, folks. So don't believe the president when he says it's the Republicans' fault. And don't believe the, I got a B in here, actually, that's funny. Don't believe, don't believe the Republicans when they blame the Democrats. Well, it is some of the Democrats' fault, but this is not political, this is global. This is about new world order. This is about globalists. This is about the elite and trying to distract us with unnecessary things like the Russian war. Yeah, that's it. Let's blame the war on the shortages of um, fertilizer. When in reality, Russia's playing along with the WEF. What, are they the 10% that's not going to comply and, and have their own way? Nah. It's part of the plan, right? To destroy the American dollar, get on this one currency situation. Yeah, the threatening letter here. They fired back. They again trying to tell him, look, you're keeping us from producing more oil. You're keeping us from producing more natural gas. You're keeping us from exploring uh, other avenues of possibility do resources not biden not putin oh and i did share this guys follow me on twitter jake gsm news uh this video here on youtube it's an hour Good morning long. everyone i started watching this um today i want to finish it but again you're going to hear a lot of the same language that we've already heard out of davos or davos whatever and what we've heard the recent days uh, there's a gentleman here from Germany who you'll, you'll hear the word acceleration. You'll hear the word about how we're changing everything and transitioning financial institutions on board. They're literally just telling you right to your face every day, this is happening. And somebody was like, I don't believe that the NWO is one and this and that. Well, good morning, you, everyone. You don't uh, have to believe that. I'm just reporting what I'm telling you, what I'm seeing. And it clearly is saying that the, the globalists, the WEF, the elite, they're doing what they want. That is obvious. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at some weather here. It's been a minute since we've done this. My goodness, you can tell it's been a minute because I can't get this in line. All right, so and I have a feeling that uh, Tropical Tidbits is not working correctly, just based on what I'm seeing right here. Oh, no, here it goes. We're not looking at anything major here in the next few days. A lot of high pressure setting in over the Great Lakes and the East Coast. Some moisture in the Gulf, but it really stays away from the land and the coast anyway. Some light showers across the United States, and then around June 25th, which is next Saturday, we should see a little bit more action when it comes to uh, rain. 
There is a feature coming into the Gulf of Mexico that is going to be around the end of June. It looks like June 26. Uh, if this stays together, this could be a weak Cat 1, making landfall the first hurricane landfall of 2022 on June 26. Now, to me, the models are not very strong, and this system is just really an oppressive tropical low at this point, in my opinion. And I think this is just too far out to really get a good handle on what's to come in the near future. So honestly, nothing major on the way, no rainstorms, no monsoons, no big hurricanes. If we do get one on the coast, it's gonna be the end of June. And that's about the time we start to see these storms popping up closer to landfall. But this that could fall apart too, as it hits the coast, depending on what we're seeing from the La Nina situation. If it is cooler, We'll have more wind shear present in the Gulf, and that'll keep those landfall hurricanes, anyway, away from the coast and mainly hanging out in the Atlantic. But right now, we're not really seeing anything to be of any concern. Regular showers and storms across the United States, possibility of severe weather, but nothing major. And I'm mentioning this for a reason, folks. It's to prove a point. Let's take a look at temperatures. Are they hot? Yes, it's June. Triple digits across the southern part. Yes, it's June going into July. Very nice across the Great Lakes. Look at that. High temperatures in Ohio in the mid-70s on Sunday, June 19th. Hot across Central America. Yes. Our central part of the United States. Yes. Not Central America. 90s. Not uncommon. Hundreds. Not uncommon. Again, this right here across the middle of the country is constantly hot. All right. They've raised cattle in Kansas for many, many decades. They know how to take care of these things. This was not a death by extreme heat. It is insane to me that they continue to stress that heat kills people. Well, yes, you could die of a heat stroke if you don't take care of yourself. But versus someone sitting in their house for three days without the AC on with 100 degree temperatures, you're not going to feel good. Somebody sitting in a house for three days with below 15, below 20 degree temperatures, you might freeze to death. There's a big difference here, folks. The cold really kills. The heat makes you uncomfortable. Here we go. Record temperatures possibly hitting the southwest by the end of June. Not unheard of. Very hot across the south. It's going to be a nice hot summer down there. But look at how splotchy the warmer weather is across the Midwest. Central Plain states and up the coast on the East Coast. Warmer weather trying to make it into the Northwest finally. And still 70s, low 70s, mid 80s in most places. And then you kind of see this cooler high front move in, keeping things in the 60s and 70s, almost July, folks. And we're going to have high temperatures in Toledo at 70 on June 27th. 70. 77 in Indianapolis. 74 near Salem, Indiana, which that area gets a lot of heat and humidity. Pretty impressive. You guys can see at the bottom here, that is from our low pressure system that'll make landfall, keeping temperatures a little bit cooler here in the south. They will welcome that as it's going to be scorchers for a while. But look, we do get some relief and it comes in July. That's the funny part. We get it into July, things cool down. Things heat up in the Northeast and the Great Lakes, though, at the start of July, and temperatures really stay where they should be for this time of year. Heading into the 4th of July week, uh, 4th of July, I believe, is on a Monday this year, and folks, when I look across the map and I see high temperatures in Toledo, Ohio, on the 4th of July, or near 4th of July, 67 degrees, parts in the Northeast also looking at 60s and 70s, Parts across the central plain states, the central part of the United States, the Midwest. I, I mean, it's July. We are seeing an average summer right now. And with La Nina still hanging around, neutral conditions right now, that's the one two region that's showing us that we are well below the threshold to continue to see a good chance of La Nina for a third year in a row starting this. And then, of course, our temperature map overall looks average. Where is all this temperature rise? Where is all this hot house crap? Where is all this extreme heat killing people left and right? 
Instead, they make up fake news stories and blame heat for killing cows when it's the farmers and the ranchers who are being forced out of the industry. If they don't, their financial institutions may decide not to carry their mortgage anymore. That's what they're doing. If you don't comply, goodbye, basically. All right, so let's say hello to a few people in our chat tonight. Um, open this up. Hello to Mari, of course, in the chat. Jesse Vorwald, our favorite farmer in Wisconsin, I think. Yes, he is, actually. Um, Matt Bros, our favorite Nebraska farmer. Good to see you in here again, buddy. Uh, lots of new faces in here. I don't recognize a lot of you guys, so great to have you in the chat. I see Shirley Davis. I see uh, Rhea. Good to have you in here, North Star. Lisa B. Melody. Good to have you as well. Knife Collector. Longtime friend and moderator here for this channel. Fish and Magician. Good to have you aboard. That's a neighbor of mine. He literally lives like 10 minutes up the road in the mountains. Good guy here. Uh, the locals out here are pretty good, actually. Wood Spirit, good to see you as well in our chat. Hello to others such as Patricia Clayton as well. Hope all is well with you. And many, many, many others here who have decided to join us tonight on this particular broadcast. Again, guys, if you like what you see on this channel and would like to see an increase of content, we need a little help with the resources part of this. And we just ask that you kindly consider joining us over at Patreon, a buck, Maybe two bucks. Hey, maybe you could do five. I don't know. But if you can help it all to the channel, that would be great. Besides, I think the $1 reoccurring monthly subscription fee would be a good way to continue to maintain this channel a lot better than the said ad revenue that we were getting on Google. Because even when we were making ad revenue, we were still being suppressed. Our views were way down for where we were with the subs. So anyway, please consider helping us out here at the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Until next time, folks, we hope everybody has a safe weekend. Uh, I pro I'm i going to try to do a broadcast this weekend. If not, definitely Monday evening. I'll do a space weather. I'll do a crop report. And, of course, if we get any breaking news on volcanoes or earthquakes or anything like that, we will bring them to you live. Until next time, folks, we hope everyone has a great night. And we will talk soon. Do you, Do you like, like the show? show? Give, Give us, us a, a thumbs up. up. Want to support us more? Share to your favorite social media platform. Buy a t-shirt or become a Patreon. All links are in the description below.